Welcome to a shorter edition of the Worst Fantasy Show. This is my eight-point draft guide strategy, free for anybody to use. It's very simple, so simple, I'm going to deliver it to you in eight minutes or less. I have done a long form of this in the past, but it's pretty straightforward, and I really think we can get through this in just a short amount of time. So, without further ado, this is how to draft fantasy football. Number one. Empty your mind. Be formless. Shapeless. Be water. You got to stay adaptable out there. You know, no matter what strategy you think you might have going in, whether that's running back heavy or I'm going to take a bunch of wide receivers early or I want to get my quarterback in tight end out of the way. Stay adaptable. Obviously, you got to go with how the draft board goes. And speaking of the draft board, that leads right into number two, set a cue. I cannot tell you how many times this one has personally bit me in the ass, where for one reason or another, I get distracted, technical errors, and it forces you to auto pick. You would much rather it auto pick from your selected pool of players in the order that you want them versus just selecting some random ass player because you really have no idea who it could land on. And that's all part of number three. You got to know the deep waters. We're going to see you off this. <laughs> There's like a huge difference between a 10-man and a 16-man league. And I always recommend to players, play in like a free 16 to 20-man league because what it does is it forces you to understand and know a different depth and level of players. You end up learning a lot of the backup spots around the league. You learn a lot of who is, you know, perhaps third on the depth chart and maybe has an opportunity later down the road. Um, And this helps you kind of see it coming a little better in shorter version redraft leagues where, you know, you might hit on, for example, last year a Puka Nakua off the waiver wire before all your league mates. So make sure that you know the deep waters and you really know the full set of uh, players in the gambit of fantasy football. and. Really, every league is different, and that's why number four might actually be the most important rule on this whole list. League settings are your league Bible. You can feel it. (laughs) I can feel the power. You need to memorize those league settings as if they were the word of God himself. Kind of kidding, but not really kidding. If you memorize your league settings through and through, regardless of however the commissioner decides to change those in the offseason, that's where ultimately you're going to find your advantages. Understanding how the league works. So whether that is maybe it's super flex and you know you have to take your quarterbacks earlier than most and other people don't fully understand that because they're newer to the experience. Uh, Tight end premium is another one. Even if it's something as simple as, you know, you look in uh, and you see that, oh, actually the running backs get 0.2 per carry, something that is not familiar to most leagues. Again, really have to know the scoring settings of your league, how many positions there are, So even just something as simple as roster construction, when you're talking about is the league standard versus is it PPR? So is it uh, one point per every reception that a player makes or does that not exist? Even the scoring itself, is it incremental scoring, which it is for most leagues, or is it still living in the days of standard where it's a flat score of, say, 75 points and there's no decimal system? Beyond that, there's even, uh, like I was saying with the roster construction in those standard and PPR leagues, whether or not there are multiple wide receiver spots. So if there's two versus three wide receiver spots makes a big difference. Are there multiple flex spots? 
uh, is their kicker and defense. So again, each league has its own little intricacies. Almost no two leagues are exactly, exactly the same. Obviously it does happen, but for the most part, every kind of league is, you know, its own living, breathing organism. And so I spent a little more time on number four here, but that's because honestly, to me, it's the most important. Number five is history repeats itself. And I've, I've heard that the past is not a predictor of the future, and I wholeheartedly disagree with that in terms of uh, at least football and fantasy football. Uh, when someone tells you who they, are, who they are, you should believe them. And so I'm very much uh, of the conviction that unless you show me something otherwise, I will use your past performances as an average aggregator represented uh, representation of what I think your potential is going forward for the future. So it's not saying that uh, I just, you know, think you're crappier. I don't really play in the game of, oh, this guy sucks or this guy's uh, amazing all the time. Every amazing Hall of Fame player that's ever existed has had bad games and every chump player that's ever existed has had good games because the uh the level of human being and athlete that makes it at the elite level of the nfl is such a small percentile of human beings that yeah they're all pretty you know amazing compared to us regular folk um so yeah and for the most part i will bet on the idea of the majority because more often than not, trying to always hit on outliers. Now, if you see a true path to an outlier, of course, you take that path. But when you are always looking for the outlier, then you lead yourself to a path of, you know, fool's gold. Number six. Coaching matters. This one to me is almost uh, as instrumental as four know the coach the offensive coordinator the defensive coordinator who's calling the plays the schemes and the tendencies especially of all of these coaches uh that is massively important to me it's more important than the names uh of even the players on the backs of the jerseys uh i really look at coaching first players second St- uh, number seven stacks on stacks I'm a big proponent of the stacks. I love my quarterback tight end stacks. Love my quarterback wide receiver stacks. Not really a fan of running back stacks, but there is a time and place for it. You know, a Brees Hall, for example, if you had an Aaron Rodgers, I would understand it. Uh, But that leads right into the last piece of advice here, correlating pieces. You know, uh, if you're looking, especially late in the draft, and you notice that you took a lot of, sure-handed veteran players early on uh guys that you think are proven players take some flyers on some random rookies late in the draft and vice versa if you took a lot of prototypical second year sophomore type or rookie type players that have a lot of potential and upside maybe look for some veteran presence at the end like an adam Thielen last year who i was recommending late in drafts to kind of help steady the ship in terms of an overall balance to your team. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. And that's it. That's eight minutes. That's my draft strategy for how to draft fantasy football. Hey, if you guys found that even a little bit helpful, I would super appreciate if you could super kick that subscribe button, maybe drop in some questions to worst sports channel at gmail.com and I will catch all of you guys on the flip side.